This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Building shit. Building shit. Building shit. Check one two one two. You know what it is. Here we are again. It's your boy DJ Shane Building Shakers. It's a Sunday midnight edition, as always. And welcome to the Rabbit Hole. Another episode of the Rabbit Hole. Another episode of the Rabbit Hole. How's everybody doing? I hope your weekend was dope. I hope your weekend was joyous. I hope everybody was healthy and, and safe. I hope everybody had a dope weekend. As for me, uh, Friday was so dope. Uh, shout out to everybody that pulled up to uh, Shakers on the Terrace, 772 Richmond Terrace for Building Shakers Friday, Flow Fridays. Uh, it was a dope, it was a dope weekend, you know what I'm saying? Not too bad. Always uh, dope energy whenever we pull up in the building. Uh, shout out to DJ Seven Spirits. You know what I mean. He came through, show some love real quick, and uh, shout out to everybody that came through for Grown Folk Game Night yesterday at 1983 Clove Road uh, Tri Lounge. Shout out to your brother Javante, and shout out to Miss Selena Lena Links who held me down yesterday and was slanging. She was slanging them goddamn drinks last night. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to her. Or whatnot, and shout out to everybody that was uh, hanging out with us last night. It was a dope, dope event. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody that came through. We had a little spade game going, so it was always good energy. And um, but it wouldn't be right if I didn't start the show in true form and fashion. Peace to all the melanated kings and queens in the land of Zamunda. Hope everybody had a dope weekend. You know what I'm saying? I had a beautiful weekend. Uh, like I said, shout out to everybody that came through uh, Friday at Shakers. Shout out to everybody that came through a Tri Lounge yesterday. I definitely appreciate you guys. Like, cook food. Me love you like cook food. You know what I mean? So, anyway, today's topic. We're going to have some fun, ladies and gentlemen. He's too nice. Yes. Fellas, stay with me. Ladies, Buckle your motherfucking seatbelt, because it's about to get deep in the rabbit hole today. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, anyway, yeah, today's episode, he's too nice. So, watch how I work. This is the Matrix. Everybody jack in. Today, I am Neo, and this is a teaching lesson. So, everybody, please jack in. Cool. So, if you remember the movie, The Nutty Professor, starring Eddie Murphy. Right? He played this uh, socially awkward character named Sherman Klump. You know what I mean? He was a genius professor that worked at a university. You know what I'm saying? He was working on some type of elixir to alter his genetic structure, blah, blah, blah. Right? But watch how I work. Watch how I work. We this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to use Sherman Klump's character as an example and i'm gonna make him represent two groups of men right 
are going to have him represent two groups of men. He's going to represent the average black man in America, and he's also going to represent the above average black man. I'm going to have him represent the high value black man, but for right now, I'm just going to have him represent the average and the above average. So, we already know Eddie Murphy, he played this character, Sherman Clump. He was a scientific genius, you know what I'm saying? He was working at the university. He was working on a grant, which he got approved with the university that he was working with. And he was working on gene therapy on blah, blah, blah. So, he had a thing for Miss Purdy. Miss Purdy, played by, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you already know who. I'm not going to say her name. We're going to keep her out of this because she got an entanglement going on. Miss Jada Pinkett Smith. Anyway, but um, he had a thing for Miss Purdy. So now, Miss Purdy, we can just assess her character in the movie. She was what we call, as Kevin Samuels would say, an adjustable six. Right? Cute, with no makeup on. When she's done up, she's definitely cute, pretty, a blase blah. Right? Cool. So, he had a thing for Miss Purdy. But here's the thing. He had this confidence thing with himself. He's tall. He's like 6'1", six, 6'2"-ish. Six, we'll give him 6'1". But he's out of shape. He's overweight. Has a house. Doesn't have a foreign. But he's a genius. And he makes, he makes good money. So we're just going to use him as a visual example of representing the average black man and the above average black man. Right? So, okay, cool. We're dealing with Sherman Clump now. So, Miss, he had a thing for Miss Purdy. Now, even though Miss Purdy and Sherman Clump were colleagues, I don't think initially she looked at him as a person that would be a possible suitor to date. So, now, let me tie this into reality. There is plenty, plenty of Sherman Clumps out here in this dating market. There are plenty of Sherman Clumps out here. There's a lot of men, whether they're average black men or above it, above average black men, who they may be socially awkward. They don't really know. They don't have the gift of gab, you know, to talk to females and whatnot and, you know, spit their game, talk your shit, spit their game, talk your shit, R.I.P. B.I.G., um, yeah, so they don't have the gift of gab, so they don't know what it is to, you know, speak to a female and spit his game, right? Cool, we can live with that. But on paper, they look good as a resume. You know what I mean? They got their stuff together, they have a house, they have a career, they may not be in shape, they may not even be your cup of tea or your cup of henny, depending on what type of female you are. But more than likely, you would probably overlook and pass these guys up because they're just not in your radar. You know what I mean? That's that's a fair assessment to make, right? Right. So, now, once Sherman Clump came up with this magic elixir to alter his DNA, he altered his DNA to obviously shrink him because he was overweight to shrink him to a decent size, to be in shape, flatten everything. We, we're going to call it flatten the curve, like like the COVID conversation. He flattened the curve, and he definitely made himself the best version of himself due to this magic elixir, right? And he turned himself into Buddy Love, right? Everybody likes Buddy Love, you know what I mean? The, the handsome, charismatic dude who women can't resist, right? But watch how the deep, the rabbit hole gets today. We're going to have fun with this, right? So, we're going to talk about Buddy Love. Buddy Love, he's tall, he's handsome, he has money, he's charismatic, a blah, blah, blah. But, 
He's an asshole. He's an asshole. He's disrespectful. He's chauvinistic. But he has money. And he drives a foreign. You know what I mean? So let me just take a time out real quick. Ladies, how many dudes do you know in 2021? How many dudes do you know that fit the description of Buddy Love? He is visually, aesthetically what you're looking for. He's tall. He's handsome. He got tats. He got muscles. He got drip, Gucci belt, all that shit. Drive a foreign, got his own crib, all that. Pearly, white teeth, everything. Cool. But he is an asshole. He's an asshole. There's no way around it. He's an asshole. Uh... He grew up without his mama. He grew up with his dad. So he doesn't know what it's like to treat a female with respect. He doesn't know what it's like to court a female. He's pretty much in it for the kill. Sort of like a predator. He's in it for the kill. As long as you look pretty and he has to get the gab to get what he wants, he's going to spit his game, talk his shit, spit his game, talk your shit. And he's going to get them draws. <laughs> he's going to get them draws. And then after that, he's going to he gonna spit you out. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. So let me, ask, let me ask the females this question. What actually are you looking for when you're in pursuit of a possible suitor to be your boyfriend? Are you so gang goofy that... You only look at his good looks and what he is aesthetically and you basically ignore his character traits and what he brings to the table as a man. Like, I'm going to be serious for a second. Like, no cap. I'm not even capping right now. Like, it's one thing to be attracted to somebody who you deem attractive. Granted. It's human nature. We're going to be attracted to who we think is attractive. But after you get over the aesthetic part, it's like, okay, let's have a grown-up conversation and let's see where we are in life. Let's see if we can disagree to agree and let's move forward with a plan because I have a plan. I want you to be possibly i want you to be my wife and the mother of my children so let's see if we can work together and have a plan that is long term but if not if you just want to be a fly by night you want to be uh you want to live your best life you live in your city girl ratchet turn up summer life okay you can be a fly by night and we can do that too hey it's fair all fair is love and war right cool let's move on so I want to ask the question, how many women, based on Eddie Murphy's character as Buddy Love, how many women date this man based on the aesthetics and not the character? Do you really have a conversation and ask this man who he is? Who is he? Outside of his muscles and his tats and his foreign and his drip. Who is this guy? Does he have a working relationship with his father? Does he have a working relationship with his mother? Does he have any siblings? Does he have any sisters? What is the what is the type of relationship that he has with women? Does he have a track record of having long-term relationships or short-term relationships? I believe, like, these are questions, ladies, you have to ask. You have to ask these questions. It's not just, uh, let me just pull up on him and give him this wop, and he's going to fall madly in love with me. It does not work that way. I'm giving you free game. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but, okay, I'm going to give you some free game. 
okay? So I'm going to need you to pay close attention to everything that I'm saying. This is going to be a cup of chicken noodle soup. But where's the spoon? Aha! Aha! Where's the spoon? Where's the spoon, ladies? Are you guys really looking at these guys past the surface level? Are you looking at them outside of their looks? Are you looking at how they treat you? Are you looking at how they interact with you? Are you looking at how they interact with you and your friends, with you and your family? This is all pertinent into the type of man that is going to be a possible suitor if you want a long-term relationship with this guy. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I am just saying. Let me move forward as we travel down the rabbit hole. So I want to ask a question, right? Let me ask a question. How many women dismiss a good man because he's too nice? I think that is a very valid question. I, I've had so many conversations. And the reason why I use Eddie Murphy uh, character Sherman Klump, because initially he he's a nice guy. Sherman Klump was a nice guy. He believed in family. He believed in having a girlfriend, having a wife. He came from that traditional style, blah, 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 blah. As funny as his family was, blah, blah, blah. That's him playing all the characters. But ultimately... In a nutshell, he came from a good family. So it's like, how many women out here have dated a man? And just because he was not what you imagine, and I don't know what this is with certain women, they want they want Tupac mixed with Common, Idris Elba, and Morris Chestnut. Like, lady, you got to pick one. It's got to be one or the other. Like, if you want a husband, yeah, granted, every man is going to have a, a, a rough edge to him. But at the end of the day, you want to be treated with respect. So if you want a guy that is going to call you all types of bitches and hoes and slap you up and all types of shit, everything that you see on TV, uh, boo-boo, honey boo-boo, sugar pants that is for television that shit is not real that's for entertainment in the real world you can't have a man that you respect and call you all types of bitches and hoes and you respect this man that is putting his penis into your vagina it doesn't work that way and especially if you're going to bring some children into the world and you want to call this man your husband it don't work that way. I'm sorry, mama. It don't. It no work. It 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 no work that way. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. But let's dig into the psychology of he's too nice. What do you mean he's too nice? When did it become a crime to treat someone as you want to be treated? I believe that's what they say in in the Bible. Treat others. Do unto others as you want to do unto you. So. Why wouldn't you want somebody to treat you with respect, treat you like a human being, treat you like you want to be treated? Like you don't want nobody to treat you like a $2 whore or a peon or a piss on or a side chick. Like you want to be respected and ultimately at the end of the day, your end goal should be I want a husband. So why wouldn't you want him to treat you nicely like he got some goddamn sense? Hello? <whistles> Hello, Houston. Houston to the ratchet chick. Houston to the ratchet chick. Um, I think it's about time you are retired at hot girl summer attitude and come back to reality. Let's uh snap you out of reality real quick and come come on down. Humble yourself. Come on down. And I want you to retire your whole card. I need you to retire your whole card, put it away, and become a decent human being. Become someone's girlfriend, then fiance, and then someone's wife, and then someone's mother. 
Okay? You got it? You got it? You got it, mama? I want you to pay attention because I'm teaching class today. Today is a teaching lesson for the rabbit hole. I am DJ Shane, but today I am Neo. I am the one. So I want you to pay attention to everything that I am saying. Okay? Okay. But yeah, I, I don't I don't understand why women want to be treated bad. What, like, I don't know what it is. There is no satisfaction in being slapped up. We all know about women being uh, in abusive relationships, domestic abuse relationships. It's a sad thing. It's so sad. I don't condone men slapping their wives or slapping their girlfriends and shit like that. That's not how you show love. How you show love is treating somebody how you want to be treated. You want to be treated with respect. You want to be treated with love and affection. And it should be reciprocal. That's how you should treat your woman. All right, fellas? If you're listening out there, that's how you should treat your lady. Treat your lady how you want to be treated. Okay? Okay. So let's move on. Um, I want to I wanna go to back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day, men, uh, specifically the 90s, the 90s, men were raised to treat women with dignity, morals, values, and respect. And I don't know what happened. What happened? Don't know say. Don't know say. I don't know, Papa. I don't know, Papa. I don't know what happened. Don't know say. Don't know, say, I don't know what happened. All these girls, they, they want to live the city girl summer. I don't know. They want to live the hot girl summer. They, they, they want to twerk and they, they want to be treated like a $2 whore. Don't know, say, don't know, say, Papa. I don't know. I don't know why the girls, they want to be treated like whores. They want to be naked all the time online and they want to find a husband. And I don't know. Don't know, say, don't know, say, Papa. I don't know. I don't know what it is about modern women. And they want an outcome, right? There's, there's nothing wrong with wanting an outcome. But if you put this type of energy out into the universe, you're going to get the same type of energy back. So ladies, let me just take a quick segue for a second. If you're always online, particularly Instagram, Facebook and Snapchat, whatever. And this is by no means no smoke and no shot to anybody that has an OnlyFans for now. I'm going to come for you bitches later. <laughs> right? Cool. But for now, I'm just talking about the regular average chick. If you're not a Instagram model, you're not a professional model, you have a regular nine to five. You can be single with no kids, single with kids, whatever. But if that is not your profession, why is it so pertinent for you to be online naked all the time? Really, there's no explanation as to why you're naked all the time online. There's no reason for it. And especially if you want this, the type of outcome that you want. If you want a long-term relationship, you want a boyfriend or whatever, whatever, and possibly fiance and then husband, there should be no reason why you're half naked online all the time. And don't give me that bullshit about, oh, it's my page, it's my page. Take away the internet. Take it away. Take the internet away. Do you think it makes sense for you to be online giving frivolous invitations for men to jump in your DM based on what you present, meaning being half naked? You are overtly pushing your sexuality into the universe. So as men, we're going to respond. We're going to respond to that shit. It only makes sense. So you can't complain that you got a thousand and one dudes in your DM sending you dick pics and everything when all you're showing is your titties and your ass, but you say, oh, I'm not like that. Oh, I'm not like that. Well, don't complain. 
you you can't complain. You know what I'm saying? You can't complain. And and here's the thing that I have a beef with. Here's a, here's a beef I got with. Women look for so many things that are so aesthetic. Right? They look for things that are so aesthetic with a man. Granted, the man can have everything. He can be tall. He can have money. He can drive a foreign. He can have a condo, apartment, etc., etc. But... Let's dig past the aesthetics. Have the conversation about the man that you are interested in. If you don't have this conversation about the man that you're interested in, then you're only going to be good for that physical confrontation. And you can't get mad at the end of the day if the dude only wants to address you for that physical confrontation. You you really can't get mad if you don't dig further than the surface. It's almost like a book. If you read a book or attempt to read a book that has a beautiful cover, it has glitter and diamonds and everything, you know, oh my God, this is a good book. And somebody asks you, well, did, what do you think about chapter six? Well, I don't know about chapter six. I, I'm just so in awe with the cover and it got the glitter and it got the diamonds and everything. Yeah, but what about chapter six? Did you read chapter six? So it's almost like keep that same energy with the man. A man can be a dope book or a dope car, whatever, whatever uh, metaphor we can use. But at the end of the day, you ladies, you have to have a conversation of the type of man that you want to engage past the aesthetics. You have to bring more than your physical attraction to the situation or else it's not going to work. You're going to be in so many dead-end situations or situationships, as the new millenniums call it. You're going to be in too many situationships that's it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm giving free game today. Like I said, I'm DJ Shane, but today I am Neo. This is a teaching lesson. I'm not coming for the females. I am just giving you fruitful information and hopefully you guys can receive it and move forward in a positive manner. Okay? Okay, mama. So, now, another question I want to ask. If everything was aesthetically met, but you couldn't look past the horrible character traits like Buddy Love, like he was an asshole. He had everything. He had the money. He got the height. He got the car, he got the house, a condo, whatever. But he was an asshole. He was disrespectful. Are you willing to look past this disrespectful traits? And being that you're not happy, are you willing to look past that? Because we know that there's a lot of women out here that date guys who are aesthetically appeasing to them. But they don't get that homely, homegrown morals and values. I'm going to treat you like a human being. I'm going to treat you with respect. They don't get that. They don't get no respectful interaction with the dude that they're dealing with. The only thing that they do get is making love between the sheets. Ooh, baby. That's all you're going to get. You're going to get some hard dick and bubble gum. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break it to you as raw as that, but that's what you're going to get. You're going to get some hard dick and bubble gum. And that's it. Jono say, Jono say, I don't know why you're just going to get some hard penis. You're going to get the hard Peter stick, and that's it. You're not going to get the loving boyfriend. You're not going to get the boyfriend that's going to massage your shoulders after a long day of work and rub your feet and run a bath for you and ask you how your day was. No, you're not going to get that. Not dealing with a guy that's disrespectful in his nature. You're not going to get that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry. You're not going to get that. So all of the females who complain about a dude that's too nice, I'm just going to give you some free game. You probably passed up on your potential husband based on the fact that you said he's too nice. What the fuck, ma? 
you don't want a dude to treat you with some respect and morals and values. And if you have a kid, you don't want him to treat your child as if it was his own, respectfully. I'm just saying. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, like I said, here in this dating market, this beast we call the dating market, there are plenty of Sherman clumps out there. They are plenty of average and above average and high value Sherman clumps out there. You know what I'm saying? There are plenty of them. And most modern women probably overlook these guys, right? Because they are visually not appeasing. But let's take let's take the aesthetics away for a second, right? Let's take the aesthetics away from Sherman Clump. Let's make Sherman Clump visually attractive. Let's take away the obesity. He's in shape. He already got the money. He's smart. He's a businessman. He's he's into his business. He makes money for himself. He has a house. He didn't got a foreign. He got he got a regular little little economy car, but he has a house. He's a multimillionaire. You wouldn't know about it unless you have a conversation with him. So now my thing is, would you pass him up? Now we're talking about Sherman Clump. He's not the fat boy no more. He is the visually attractive, handsome young man, but he treats you with respect and he's nice. Now, would you pass him up, ladies? Would you pass him up? And we're going to put him up against Buddy Love. Now you got Sherman Clump that is visually and aesthetically attractive and handsome up against Buddy Love. Same handsome guy, but he's disrespectful like a motherfucker. Would you treat Sherman Clump now with the same energy? Would you consider him for a date? Would you introduce him to your mama? You know what I mean? Like, these are questions that you have to ask now. And um, I'm playing with the character that Eddie Murphy played. First being, you know, out of shape and overweight and da 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 But he has the money. He has the house. He's a genius. And he makes money. So I, I was just playing playing with his character. But now I'm, I'm flipping it. Sherman Clump is now visually attractive. He's visually... He's... A handsome guy and he's you would probably date this guy blah 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 but he's nice he's not like buddy love buddy loves an asshole he's a testosterone driven psychopath <laughs> you know what i mean but you got sherman clunk now he's somebody you can bring home and introduce him to your mama and your father and you'd be proud would you date him ladies would you date him I don't know. I'm putting these two characters together. I'm putting Sherman Clump, Buddy Love together. They're both attractive now. Tall. They got money. One got a foreign. One don't. Both have cribs. I don't know, ladies. Let me know. It, it, it poses a question now. Are you just drawn to a dude based on his aesthetics and you're not looking at anything else? It's a valid question to ask. I don't know. I don't know. So it brings me to this point, right? There's a term that came out last year and we're we're definitely in in this zone right now. Hot girl summer. I don't know who came up with this shit. Hot girl summer. But in any event, to all my young ladies who are in their 20s, early 20s, or late 20s, approaching their 30s, um, I'll say this much. Be very wary of the dude that you choose and pick to date. Because it's going to have an effect on the outcome later on in life. So I'll keep it short and sweet to say this. Don't get pregnant off of potential. Don't get pregnant off of potential. Just because a guy looks good and all that stuff and he 
make you get the butterflies in your stomach and all that shit. Don't get pregnant off of potential. Make sure that the guy that you are dating, he is valid. And you will be proud to introduce him to your father or your mother. Whatever parent that you deem fit for this conversation. As long as you would feel comfortable introducing this guy to your mother or your father, that's the guy you should go with. Not the guy that you get butterflies in your stomach and just because he's knocking the hell out the bottom of your JJ. No, that's physical. We're talking about real life interactions. This guy is going to be a good suit for you long term. Not the short game, the long game. Right? Okay. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> so my thing is, uh, for the women who believe in this hot girl summer, a yada, 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 you think you guys got time? I'm going to let you know. You don't have that much time. Your 20s are going to, it's going to fly by. That was me hitting you with an African dart. That's reality. Your 20s is going to fly by. So my my thing is, Get out the game. Get you a good man. I don't care if he's nice and all this other shit. Get you a guy that's nice. Trust me. You'll appreciate it later on in life. Trust me when I tell you. Get you a good man that treats you nice, treats you like a princess, whatever. Treat you like a human being with respect. Get you a good man and get out the game. Because this dating game in 2021, if you're single with no kids, it's a cesspool. It's ugly out here. It's ugly. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It, it's, it's too ugly. It's, it's ugly. So my thing is, there are too many childless men out here in this dating market in 2021. And I don't get it. Well, at least I don't get it. I don't think the women realize that there are so many single black men out here on this dating market. And they are holding out. They are holding out for a reason. And it's not a bad thing that there's so many men, 51% of men right now are single and childless, according to blackdemographics.com. They are holding out. Because they believe in relationships. So if 51% of single black men are single and childless in 2021, that's telling you that's arguably more than half. And that's telling you that, hey, the women out here are not to the standard. Modern women are not to the standard of the traditional woman of yesteryear, meaning 1950s and 1960s. Yes, women are more independent. They make more money. They are with the movers and shakers. They're more educated and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, are you qualified to be a wife? And are you qualified to be in a long-term relationship? It seems like today, in today's society, Women are only good for a quick hookup, and that's it. I'm sorry to say it. It is what it is. Women are, most women are good single women out there. They're, whether you're single and childless or single with kids, it seems like most women nowadays are just good for a short-term hookup or blah, blah, blah. And it's your turn for my fellas. It, 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 it's your turn now. It's your turn to get the WAP. It's your turn. And then after your turn is over, she feels like, oh, I'm done with you, blah, blah, blah. You're not giving me what I need for whatever frivolous reasons. And then psst, you're out the door. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. I'm just relaying the information as I receive it. And I'm giving you statistics and data to back up my argument. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody can help me out. Maybe somebody uh, of the female persuasion can come on my show and we can have a split screen conversation and we can debate this. I'm open. I'm open for the conversation. I'm definitely open for the conversation. You know what I mean? I'm uh, I'm not a hater. <laughs> as as most people would would 
arguably disagree. They they think I'm a woman hater or blah blah blah. All my detractors and naysayers. Uh, yeah. Oh, who hurt you? You always talk about the women. Da 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 da. Like no, I talk about the women because I got love for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I want to see y'all do better. And I talk about the black men too. I tear into their ass too. But right now, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about y'all. Y'all got to get y'all shit together. It's, it's been so many years and years and years where we are just so used to one-way aggression. We're, we were so used to black women talking about black men like we ain't shit. We ain't got our shit together. We scrubs hanging on the passenger side and your best friend's ride trying to holler at me. Yeah, all right, we we hung it, we listened to this same old song and dance for so many years, you know what I'm saying? You know, and it didn't help with the music, you know, you want to be independent and all this other shit, you know, basically putting this energy out there like you don't need a man. And at the end of the day, we all know that we need each other so we can get to the end of our day. We need each other. A man and woman needs each other. I don't want to take the biblical route, but yeah, on a human-to-human -human level, men and women, we need each other so we can get to the end of our day. It's, it's teamwork. There's no I in team. You know, I is selfish. I is you. Me, you, I. But you can't get your mission accomplished if you want a family, you want a husband, you want children. You need a man to get this accomplished. You can't do it by yourself. That's the whole point. Okay? Okay. Moving on as we travel deep down the rabbit hole. And it brings me to my last point, right? It seems like uh, there are like a few types of women walking around here. We have the wifely women walking around. We got the ratchet city girls, the unruly, uncooperative, verbally combative, masculine traits. And my thing is, this is unattractive. It's unattractive. I don't care what you look like. You can be an adjustable six. You can be an eight, nine, or a ten. My thing is, if you garner these type of characteristics, you know, you're ratchet, you're loud, you're combative, you always want to get the last word, you know, you cuss like a sailor, like, a man does not want to put up with that type of behavior from his woman. I don't think no man, not on this earth, <laughs> Not on this earth. I don't think no man wants to put up with a woman that is going to be or that exhibits that type of masculine behavior. It's unattractive. It's unattractive, ladies. That's all I'm saying. Y'all might want to tone that shit down. Get get into your feminine. Get into your feminine energy. It, it is not a crime to be submissive. It is not a crime to tap into your feminine energy. Men love this shit. Men love this shit. Trust and believe. Men love this shit. Oh my God. You don't know how it tickles our fancy to know that our lady is always in her feminine energy. She respects us. She respects the relationship. She knows how to conduct herself in public. She is a woman at all times in public. She doesn't embarrass herself or me because people know we are together. We are an item. And she is always in her feminine energy. That is such a turn on. It is such a turn off when we see women acting the opposite. And I'm going to just, just leave it. I'm going to just leave it there. I don't know what it is in 2021 that women just think like they can carry themselves like how men carry themselves. This is not an equal playing ground. It's called, you're a woman, we're a man. Men do man shit and women do woman shit. 
Stay in your lane. Don't try to be us. Because you can't. You know what I mean? But we're not going to take the scientific conversation. We're not going to go down that road. We're not going to travel down that chamber of the matrix today. But ladies, just from me to you, always be in your feminine energy. It is super duper attractive. Trust and believe when I say that. Ooh, we. And my KC and JoJo boys. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, we. Yes. Be in your feminine energy at all times. It is a turn on and it's beautiful. It's sexy. Yeah, yeah do that shit. <laughs> do it. Like Nike. Do it. So. My thing is, I don't care, ladies, what you look like. Always be in your feminine energy. Let's just remix this shit and let's unplug. If you're not getting the results that you want in life, however you're acting, blah, 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 you're not getting the outcome that you want, hey, let's let's remix it. Why not? Let's remix it. You know what I'm saying? My thing is, if you are submissive, you're feminine, you're cooperative, you're friendly, you're you're nice to be around, you got a bubbly personality, you are gonna get you a decent man. You know what I'm saying? And that brings me to the close of the show. Ladies, in regards to the character of Sherman Clump and Buddy Love, and I like to use movies to, to make my my examples, um Buddy Love pretty much represents the thug, the knucklehead, or even the dude that looks good, has a decent job or a nice job, but he just doesn't treat you right because he wasn't taught he wasn't taught that when he grew up, so he doesn't know no better, right? But you have the Sherman Clump. There's plenty of Sherman Clumps out here, whether it's the visually unattractive uh, overweight guy, or it's the Sherman clump that's socially awkward, but he may be attractive, but he's just socially awkward and he doesn't know how to approach women or blah, blah, blah. So there's plenty of Sherman clumps out there. My thing is, ladies, get you a Sherman clump. <laughs> you know what I mean? However, it fits your description of being physically and aesthetically attractive. Get you a Sherman clump. Buddy Love was just for uh, educational purposes and for me poking fun at the movie and, you know, making my uh, contrast and comparison. But, ladies, get you get you a Sherman clump. At the end of the day, it's going to be for your best benefit in the long term, in the long run. If you definitely, if you want a husband and you want a family and you want security, get you a Sherman clump. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got to say. So, again, like I said, in closing, ladies, um, there's no such thing as too nice. You are probably turning down your future husband if you are ignoring dudes that you're dating. And you say, oh, he's too nice. He's too nice. Cut that shit out. Cut that shit out. You're probably turning down your potential future husband. It's always a dope thing to be treated with respect. And that's how I size it up. You can call it being too nice or whatever, whatever. I just say he got respect for you. And respect goes a long way. You ain't got to like me. I just need you to respect me. So as long as you respect me and you, re I respect you and you respect me, this relationship will go a long way. Right? Right. So again, let me close the show. I always like to close the show in true form and fashion with good energy as always. Like I said, shout out to uh, everybody that came out to Shakers uh, this Friday, 772 Richmond Terrace. Shakers on the Terrace, Flow Fridays, Build a Shaker Flyers, Miss Your Baby Girl, Miss Flo. Man, Miss Your Baby Girl. I thought about you the other day. Um, and shout out to everybody that came down to Tri Lounge, 1983 Clo Row. For grown folk game night. Shout out to Miss Selena who was on deck with the Drizinks. Oh man, she had me on one last night. Oh man, we definitely ended our night at uh, Leroy uh, Hookah Bar. Shout out to Sam, the owner. 
he definitely greeted us with open arms. We had a VIP table of 10. We was in there super deep, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Selena, shout out to everybody that was chilling with us. And um, man, oh, shout out to uh, Andrea for them pieces. Thank you for the stickers. I'm gonna put that on my laptop, you know what I'm saying? So I hope, hopefully I'll see you uh, at, uh, at a Building Shakers Fridays, Flow Fridays, you know what I'm saying? Come on down, next drink on me, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Andrea, always good energy. That was a good vibe last night, definitely good vibe. Um, shout out again to all the owners of BK Lobster. I heard you guys uh, open up another location in Maplewood, New Jersey, and I heard you ha you guys had a successful grand opening. I, I heard the numbers. I heard the numbers. So, yeah, definitely shout out to everybody that has a hand in that multi-billion dollar industry and business. Shout out to Brother Ed. Shout out to Rodney. Shout out to Miles, Mo, Muff, Tone. Shout out to you guys. Definitely proud of you guys. Love what you guys are doing. You guys are creating employment opportunities for people in the community that look like us. So, this was a wrap. Another episode of the Rabbit Hole. Another episode of the Rabbit Hole. I hope you guys enjoy. Definitely stay tuned for uh, future episodes of the Rabbit Hole. Because we got some shit coming down the pipeline. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and shout out to all my bros at NYP. Shout out to my bro Felix FP Idle Hands. I hope you guys enjoyed the new episode that I uploaded to my channel, episode number two, called DJ Shame Unscripted. It's out right now on my channel on Bills and Shakers, aka the Rabbit Hole. So please subscribe, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. So each and every time that I upload a video, you get a ding. You know what I mean? Let you know I uploaded a new video. So in true form and fashion, this is a close of the rabbit hole. I definitely appreciate everybody that has been supporting us through the pandemic. We obviously now, we we outside, hashtag we outside. So uh, still everybody still be safe, wear your mask, keep your six feet, blah, 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 take your vitamins, all that good shit. You know what I mean? And I will see you guys the next time I jack into this version of the matrix of the rabbit hole and let me take you out in true form and fashion with our theme song produced by myself fits the producer and my brother angel and this was a wrap this was another episode of the rabbit hole yes sir <laughs> this should be played at high volume preferably, preferably in, a in a residential, residential area. area hey building shit hey yo kofi black Jim Baez, Brittany, Brittany Gravely, I need y'all to write something to this beat. I need a, I need a theme song. Hey, hey. To you, my brother, my yes sir, my yes sir. Boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? It's another episode of the Rabbit Hole. Building shoes. Peace. Yes.